Hi, this is Tim, and today we're going to talk about contactors and relays, and what the difference between two of them are, and how they actually operate. First, let's talk about what is a relay and what is a contactor. And functionally, they're exactly the same. This is a contactor, and typically it'll be used to start motors. This one has three poles, and it also has a couple of auxiliaries. And then this is a relay. And a relay is exactly the same. So here is a two-pole relay. Now, most relays will be some type of socket relay configuration, but they're usually for more of sending a signal or some smaller loads. So all relays and contactors have a contact voltage rating and amperage rating. So in the case of this one right here, it has different amperage ratings for different voltages. So this one can do 15 amps at 277 volts AC, or it can do 15 amps at 28 volt DC. Now that's a big drop when you go from AC to DC, and that'll be very common on relays and contactors. So if you have a DC load, you need to make sure that your contactor relay can handle that many amps on DC. Also, contactors and sometimes relays will actually have a horsepower rating on them. And that's an important thing to look at when you are sizing your contactor. So if we look at the side of this, it has a chart here with voltage and phases. So it has one phase or single phase and three phase. And on single phase at 115 volt, this can handle a one and a half horsepower motor. Or at 240 volt on single phase, it can handle a three horsepower motor. Then it has three phase ratings. And so at three phase, this one can handle seven and a half horsepower at 240 volt, or it can handle 15 horsepower at 480 volt. So as your voltage goes up, typically your horsepower rating will go up also, up to a limit. Now if we look at this relay right here, it does have a horsepower rating. It is rated for only 120 volt as far as a motor load. And it is good for a half horsepower. So now let's talk about a little more about how a contactor works. You see on the front of it, when you energize a contactor, this thing moves in and out. But how does that actually work? We're going to take this contactor apart to show you. In fact, first, let's wire this up. So let's go with a basic wiring exercise. Now we're using this trainer here. This is a trainer that we've modified for three-phase power. But the push buttons and lights and everything come with all of our trainers. So we're going to be using 24 volt for our control circuit. And a 24 volt power supply has a plus and a minus. And just to start, really basic, we're going to actually wire the plus and minus directly to this contactor. So over here on the back side of our trainer, we have our 24 volt terminals. And I'm gonna hook a wire to the plus of it and the other wire to the minus of it. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the minus wire. And then here is the plus wire of it. And so what we're going to do is right here on the top is where we're at. You can see we have two wires. We have all these wires on the front of it. But here further on the back of it, we have these other two terminals. And this is called the coil. And if we touch this other wire to the coil, you see it pulls in. And what this is, is this coil is a magnetic coil of wire. And when you put power on it, it turns it into a magnet and pulls the contactor in. So let's take this apart so we can understand that a little better. Okay, so now I have it apart, and this is the coal of our contactor. So inside this white tape right here is a lot of wraps of wire. In fact, it's the same wire that you see right here. We may do some experiments with this later. But when you wrap wire around something like this and then you energize it, you create a magnetic field. But if we take our plus wire and hook it to our coal, then now this coal is going to be magnetized. I can't make it stick to it, but I can feel the magnetism in here. Let me see if I can find something a little lighter weight. 
right here's a small washer and if I lay that in there see it doesn't fall out now if I take the wire off of the coal it immediately falls out this, so this is electronic magnet that is actually pulling this contactor in so then you see in the contact there's a big chunk of iron in there and what that is going to do is make this magnetic field such that it's going to want to pull the other side in. As we bring this contactor close, it actually grabs it right there at the end. And that's how a contactor or a relay works. Really, it's an electromagnet that pulls those contacts in. Now let's talk a little more about the actual contacts that are pulling in. And you can see them right in the side of most of your relays. So right there, you can see the contact, and right now it's touching the normally closed contact, which is at the top, and you see the coil right there. When it energizes, it's going to pull it towards that normally closed contact. So let me wire this one up now, and now watch as I touch this wire to it, you'll see the contact here move. Oh no, you didn't. And the reason you didn't is um, contactors. We talked about their contact rating, but I didn't talk about the coil rating. Every contactor or relay also has a coil voltage. And this is a 220 volt coil. And we're using 24 volt here, so this will not pull this in. So we're going to need to take that off and we will snag this 24 volt relay. Now note, these relays really look physically the same. In fact, besides that red mark on the front of the 220, you can't really tell the difference. So you'll need to look really closely at the ratings of relays to see them. And now it'll slide right into the same socket. And we'll try it again. So now I'm going to touch it. And there it is. You can see it physically moving up and down. And that is what's happening inside all of your relays and your contactors. Hope you found this video helpful. Thank you to our Patreon subscribers who helped make this video possible. If you'd like to learn more about our patrons, then see the link in the description. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.